Pointers are the easiest thing to understand in C, but the syntax just gets in the way. In this video, I will explain how pointers work, what you should know to avoid common mistakes, and how to use them with memory management functions such as malloc. So what is a pointer? A pointer is just a variable that stores a number. Now I guess that doesn't sound academic enough. How about this? A pointer is just a variable that stores an address. So here are two things that people really have trouble with. One, what is an address and how do I get one? Second, what's a pointer? Well, in C, every variable has an address, even pointers. To get the address of a variable, we use the address of operator. Now, keep in mind, the address is just a number with a special meaning. The fact that it's shown as a hex value in most examples doesn't mean anything. You can represent an address as a hex value, a binary value, or even a decimal value. It really doesn't matter. The second thing we need to understand about pointers is the dereference operator. We can combine the address of and the dereference operator to get the address of x and dereference x, like so. Declaring a pointer is probably where a lot of the confusion comes from. As you can see in this example, declaring a pointer and dereferencing it look very similar. But don't confuse these two. We're doing very different things on these lines. The first line declares a pointer and stores the address of x. The second dereferences the pointer and assigns the value to the variable x. Now, do you remember how we mentioned pointers have their own address as well? This may shock you, but you can actually point to a pointer. And the syntax looks like this. Let's take our previous example and add another layer to it. Here, the pointer p is being pointed to by p2. And keep in mind, you can have as many pointers pointing to other pointers as you want. The pattern remains the same, and you will probably never have to deal with more than two layers. There are a lot of misconceptions between arrays and pointers, and I want to clear up a few. First, an array in C can't be reassigned, but a pointer can very easily reassign the memory location in the stores. In this example, we're not using the address of operator, because this array will always return its own address. But this is not true for pointers. If we use a pointer by itself without using the address of operator, it will return the value it's storing, not its address. And while we're on the topic of pointers, we need to talk about size of and how it relates to pointers and arrays. No matter how many elements your pointer points to, it will always return the same size. But with arrays, it's different. Using the size of operator will tell you exactly how many bytes your pointer contains. But be careful, size of will give you the size in bytes, not the count of your elements. An int may be two to four bytes, while a char is always a single byte. So if you need to get the count of your elements, then you need to divide the size of your array by the size of a single element of your array, like this. Because of how the language works, passing an array to a function will always cause it to decay to a pointer. So you will lose the ability to get the size of your array if you pass it to a function like this. Similar to size of, we have the function estero length. Now keep in mind, estero length doesn't work exactly like size of. First of all, estero length is a function while size of is an operator. This is what it will do. It will count how many characters your string holds up until it finds the first null character. It won't calculate the size of your buffer perfectly, but if you want to pass a string to a function without specifying the length, as long as your string is formatted properly, meaning it has the null character set, the function will reliably give you the length of your string. Now consider this code example. Would it surprise you if I said that this is undefined behavior? C, even though it doesn't have a garbage collector, will automatically delete your stack variables. This means we're returning a pointer to a deleted memory location that could already be used by another part of our program. To fix this, we can dynamically allocate a buffer like so. The awesome thing about dynamically allocated buffers is that they will not be deleted until we explicitly call the free function on them. This has the consequence of being a potential memory leak. So this memory will stick around until you as the developer delete it. Now keep in mind, we don't need to specify the size of our buffer when we free it because our operating system already knows how much it needs to free. So just passing the pointer is enough. Now, even though we freed the memory, we didn't assign the pointer to null. And this is a mistake, because free will not assign your pointer to null automatically. If your pointer is pointing to invalid memory, you have a dangling pointer. So to prevent future mistakes, it's a good idea to assign your pointer to null. If you want to see more videos, click the playlist on the screen right now, and I will see you later.